All right, welcome to Six Scale, everybody. It's February 10th. Notes are in the chat. Add yourself as an attendee, please. Okay, uh, today, <clears throat> a few items. Um, we're gonna start as we have in the last few meetings. I'll just go over the performance periodic job results again, really quick. Um, so the only change here and these, uh, these results is now uh, this test or this change has merged. This was the, um, this is basically targeting um, or making our, establishing the relationship between the range vector and the Promethean scrape interval. And it's, it's really focusing on scraping at a specific time near the, the end of the, uh, right, right near the end of the test, right when we are gonna get the most accurate data. So let's see, let's look at some of the recent ones. Should be pretty much the same. Yeah, so pretty similar looks, create counts. Um, oh, so one change actually what I did do with um, with that PR is that I pulled out the the primer test um, from, from outputting results. Just, we don't really need them. So um, there's only gonna be one set of results again and it's just the, the test. That, that is one change you'll notice. Um, create, pod, create pod accounts look good. Um, yeah, everything else is here. Which looks good. Okay. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay. Um, there were, so from last time, um, let's see, I created an issue. This is the, um, the high node count, this number right here. Um, this is an issue that will track um, that investigation. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at this, but just so you guys know, this is where we're tracking it. All right. Let's move on to PRs then. So we have um, the, there's a change for making the performance pre-submit, uh, making a, por a performance pre-submit job. So not just a periodic job. Um, I tagged Daniel, Marcella, I Craig tagged you and David. I, I don't know, um, I, don't, I don't really know like what to do with this change. Like it, it, I don't know much about what I'm doing here. I kind of just, copied from other tests, seem pretty reasonable. But uh, yeah, I definitely, if you have any advice on this, let me know. I have not used this, I'm not very familiar with this. Hey, um, oh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I'm really distracted because there's a customer issue I'm getting pinged on, but, uh, so you want to add this as a pre-submit, as long as you make it optional and not run by default. And I forget the settings for that. You sh yeah, optional, true. Yeah, I've got here and then always run false. I think that's it. Perfect, yeah. Then all you have to do is uh, type a comment, test the name of this pre-submit right. and you, yeah, you'll get it when you want it. Uh, do you need that just to be merged? I, well, I don't know if it works. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, is there a way to like, is, does it run here? I, I have no idea how this works. Oh, uh, no, not really. Yeah, I was trying to hope if, uh, like, cause I, what I did was is I was, uh, I copied the tests that we have, like all like this command, everything, um, some of the flags. And then I copied some of the flags from another optional test. Like that's where I got some of the stuff from. Um, so um, I don't know. I mean, I, we could just, if we want to merge it and I can try and test it on a PR, uh, but it might just be trial and error. I mean, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to know probably what we have to do. Uh, okay. So that, that global timeout of four hours is probably a little extreme, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but that was for our entire end to end test suite uh, or, or whatever uh, lane you picked. It might have just been the compute or storage. Uh, I'm just, 
Yeah, some things that I don't know <clears throat> is this, for example, uh, Basel Unnested, for example. I, I have no idea what those this label is doing. And I think Din, the Dindi, it's like some uh, uh, authentications for Huawei, if I remember correct. Maybe don't need this label here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess yeah. like if we no one knows, like I, I mean, I'm a, I I think almost we just merge this. Like, there's some things that are worrisome, like this. I I don't know if this means it's going to be running in parallel to the stuff, but I mean, I think maybe we'll, we'll, we'll know. Like, we'll I think maybe some trial and error might do do us good here, just if there's enough way to to test this, because I but maybe like I, to me it seems reasonable. I think it'll you know it might work, but I mm -hmm. we'll get some feedback, I guess, if we. Can Does you go back down so... to the environment variables? I just want to check sure. this out. I think I pulled most of these from, I think maybe all of them from Marcelo's pre submit. Yeah. I didn't find like some of these like in other jobs. So I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, no, because they the, work, but the it's the same jobs... image though. So. Yeah, the other jobs are not exporting Prometheus. That's why they don't have it. They are not using Prometheus, and also because we we run one hundred, we create one hundred VMs VMIs. We need more nodes and and more memory per, you know, yeah. per node. That's that's why we we have this big configuration here. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any risk with this since it's optional, and it, it's a really expensive test as far as like the number of resources it uses. But if we're just running it when we need it. Um, I don't. I don't see a problem. Uh, let me. Do you have the PR in the uh, notes? Yeah. Let me right ping somebody to. It's that one right there. Yep. Let me get that through for you. Um, yeah. I'm gonna give it to approve, and uh, let's let somebody else do the looks good to me. Just to. You can move on to something else if you want, and I'll try to get that through for you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I think um, so. Like this would, um, like Marcelo, I think you commented on there about the label. We what we do is we'd run, um, we'd run like uh, I think I have it. Yeah, we run this test poll and sensing performance, and this would just run it for us, um, which is something like I really wanted to do for um, the other PR here, uh, which is the threshold count. So the second PR is, um, so we talked about this last meeting, right? Like we, so what I did was I added, um, I added a way to, to relate two different metrics uh, to the audit tool. So basically I, I call it ratio and metric. And so uh, the ratio means like, this is the limit, like the amount of the maximum amount that we expect um, it to be greater than, um, so two times, the amount of, it must be less than two times, the, the patch virtual machine count must be less than two times, create pods count um, to pass the threshold. So we just, so it's basically just a relationship between the two. Um, so it's pretty easy. And, and so the, we talked about 10 to one last time, two to one on the create pods count, and then added the um, the other threshold values based on seconds which was, was already supported. So. That's all this change does. So it gives us a way to compare. But yeah, what is where I wanted to run that test? I wanted to see how this how this did in the uh, how I ran the test. I mean, because I can run it locally, but I'd like to see it in the you know in the periodic or in the, the lane. Since it's merged, maybe you can trigger that now. Is it? It's it's not merged yet. Um, are you talking about the 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 job here? Which one are you talking about? Oh, okay. I, I thought I saw it was merged. Yeah. Okay, it's not. Yeah, so what I wanted to do was this. I wanted to do this to test it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't exist. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think this one's ready. I don't know if um, Marcelo looks like you reviewed. I don't, David, if you've got comments on this one, yeah, let me know um, to get some time to review. Yeah, um, it looks good to me. So I didn't see any. Okay, perfect. Then yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think I, we can, yeah, then we can go ahead and improve it then. And, 
that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just go to yeah. Just, you know, for the the optional performance sub press summit. Okay. I think I mentioned about you know to have a label. Yep. Because if we have the label, we don't need to decorate. You know, memorize all the name of the of the job and and it, it will be like something that can be generic for like you know someone goes to a PR and say okay this PR needs performance test and then mark this label and then this label will trigger the the test that. I don't know how to include the labels, but uh, I know that it's possible to do that in Pro. So, yeah, um, that's a good question. I don't know what the all the labels are, but I my guess is that what you'd have to do is to tie into you have to create the label, and then you probably have to tie into the bot um, that that triggers this. I don't know who to ask for that though. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that would be interesting to see. Yes. Yeah, I think Kubernetes is doing that. So in the CI CD system. Okay. Um, it doesn't need to be in right now, but we can keep in mind, you know, it would be nice to have like a yeah. label that it's more generic to trigger that. And anyone that thinks that a PR, it's, it should, you know, have some performance impact. It might be nice to include that. People that are reviewing you know the PR, so just type that and would be nice. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, let's go to defining pressure is what I call it. Um, so the, what I wanted to do is so I, I we have this we ha I have this uh, this doc here. Um, I've already talked about it a few times. Outline some of our tests. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to review this um, because Marcel, you brought this up previously, and I kind of want to just do spend a few minutes talking about this, just to get a sense of like how we can define pressure. Because what's important is like you know I talk about in the in the in this in this um, in this uh, document is like you know what is what a test means. Like we're you know what are we, what are we testing when we um, you know, based on based on uh, even the tests we're doing, like steady state or um, or whatever burst tests. So like, what what is it like that? You know, what is the, the the pressure that we're putting on the cluster, and how does that affect scale and performance and so on? And and so there's this presentation, Marcel. I, you were the one that that made me aware of this. This was um, you showed this. Uh, you had a link to this in one of your um, your documents. And this was, uh, I found this interesting. I've, I've read this through um, once or twice and I like the way sort of it de defines um, defines scale scalability because it's sort of, um, I think, you know, people use the term, right? Like nodes, like how many nodes do you scale to? And, and it's like, it's a little bit more than that. And, and this describes it really well. Like here's like a good diagram. Like basically, they're looking at scale as sort of a a function of all of these things, like a number of different things, like nodes, number of nodes, number of namespaces, number of secrets, services, pods per node, um, ingresses, pod churn. <clears throat> so that's you know kind of like when we talk about with the steady state test, um, all these things like make up. What we call like the scalability of the system, and kind of the way that I've been characterizing this, like, is just by when I read this, it's like it's the sum of pressures. The sum of all pressure is really what the scalability of a system is. And there's a lot of interesting graphs in here, like um, oh, then like this, like when they talk about how the relationship between um, the number of pods per node and the number of nodes, so like two variables, and that. You'd think that you know maybe there's a relationship, uh, kind of like a, I mean, they have it like a square here, like where they, you know, maybe like there's, you know, where you know what's the right place or the number of nodes and the number of pods that you're safe, and you know, and it's not always the it's not exactly the relationship you think, and so they have some interesting graphs like here's one like if you have the number of backend services. Um, and the number of services, here's the relationship, like 
rough numbers like here's like if you're if you have 250 back end services the number of services that you can have is fairly low down here you know so it's yeah, I mean, here 5K services, 125 backends, this is no bueno. So we have to be somewhere, I don't know, under here, like 100 services and maybe 200 backends. Yeah. The only thing that I, that I missed from this presentation, because this presentation is very nice. So I was actually basing, you know, all my experiments and things on this presentation. I think mm -hmm. it's very good work from Kubernetes. The only thing that I miss here probably it was because it was not the goal of the presentation is some numbers, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, what's overloading here? It's the API server. What's what's the problem here? You know, when you have more service here, they say that you, you should not go for this direction, but they do not say what failed. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a good point. And, and this is kind of like where I want to go with this, Marcel, is that I kind of want to really want to take this and, and build on a lot of this experience because like those are the questions like I agree, like I would like to know and, and really want to like kind of when we're when we talk about like having a test framework that we can hand to someone and then they run it and give us some maybe a number in return or something that we can mm -hmm. use. Like, that's kind of what I want to see. Like, cause then, cause I want to try to answer that question. Like, you know, what is it that's causing the problem? And we, like, you look at today, like what are some of the metrics that we've added, like with, um, for example, um, like the phase transition times, what's fascinating is that um, like, we can tell with those based on what phase we're in, who is doing work. And, and, and that's like important. So like, we can tell like, okay, we're taking long from here to here. Um, here's our rate of churn, here's our number of nodes, here's our number of backend services, services, so on. We can try and eliminate some variables or kind of maybe make an equation of like what pressure would look like and then have an idea, okay, it's in this pending phase that's that the pressure is, seems to be affecting. Okay, it's something with Kubernetes and it's something we have to do with maybe, you know, creating a PVC or something. Like when we start eliminating things, you know, maybe mm -hmm. getting some numbers kind of going in that direction. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So here's some of the other, uh, there's lots of really good graphs in there. So like um, the different effects that um, that different pressure, different pressure variables can have, um, kind of an interesting picture. Mm -hmm. um, so they have some equations here, which is cool. Total objects, those CRDs. Uh, some limits. And then um, these are these are good ones. These are uh, some of these were pretty good. So this is like they started to quantify a few things. So here's um this was cool. So 1300 nodes at under 110 pods per node is about the limits here um that seems to be the the green area the good area mm -hmm. and then at 5k nodes which is i think is what they're advertised as the limit of their their scale right it's mm -hmm. that's defined as 30 pods per node so i mean this basically is a good some uh good summary of like why it's so important to define what you're testing and why saying you can scale the 5k nodes is is misleading because a workload could may or may require you to have more pods per node. Like it's not, it's not, it's not perfectly clear. Like, okay, you know, what does it mean when you scale to 5K? So that's like, you know, this is a good example of like, you know, why we want to have this detail. Services, backend services, we kind yeah, of talked so about that one. One of my yep. interpretations of, you know, there, if you can come back, yeah. So they say that they are far limits, it's 5K nodes. However, for a normal, you know, normal cluster, normal configuration, I would say that it's up to 13,000 or 1300, you know, because it's, yeah. it's where we can have normal, you know, number of pods per node. Yep. 
Yeah, well, I mean, but this is, you're right. And, and this is what I think is, is interesting. It's like, they're just based on the, the, the area under this curve, you know, your mm -hmm. workload, what, you know, you consider to be your workload can fall anywhere in here, right? It's like, and so like, like the point is like, like, you know, it's, it's interesting that, um, like you want to stay in this, but you know, when it's, but it's also not safe to say like, oh yeah, I have this many nodes, so I must be able to, so, it, you know, that means that Kubernetes should scale to this level and I don't need to worry about my pods per node, but it's, it's not true. You do need to worry about your pods, number of pods per node and other pressures as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, which is, which is critical. So like you said, this is the normal distribution, right? This is their 1300 nodes, 110 per node would be like the normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess mean, like the safest, right? The safest area because like this is the max you can get. Exactly. You know, so, and then yeah. use like some much much cluster approach. You know, if you want to have more something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Services per namespace. Um, kind of interesting. Yeah. More namespaces. I think and... I saw their presentation about that also, like uh, creating more namespace it's definitely a bottleneck. Yeah, I, so this is, I've experienced this. We So this is mm -hmm. something, what, why this was so interesting when I read this, Marcelo, is because um, like I've been doing, this is something I've done internally in testing and we had, um, and actually it's not, actually it's not this one, it's, um, well, actually, it, well no, it is, sorry, it is this one. It's the, um, we have a number of namespaces, certain number of namespaces, and we have a lot of objects in a namespace. Um, but it's usually we're kind of packing some of them into a single namespace and and that can have an effect. Like we, too many too many objects per, per namespace means now controllers need to spend more time going through and locating those objects. So this is like a this is a, a behavior that that I've seen, even though it's for services, there's I think there's one other another metric in here somewhere it says um, it talks about uh, how the, um, how this can affect controllers. Yeah, this one's interesting. And, and, and having observed this, it's definitely, I don't know what the limit is. Like, I haven't been able to quite to relate the limit because this is like services per namespace. I've seen this like when internally, it's like we have, it's so many other objects. It's not just services. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really any object. Uh, Podchurn, this is another big one. This was the one that we want to definitely want to target in that steady state test, um, right? This is like, this is like we we create a hundred VMIs, we start deleting some and recreating some, right? So like the pod churn rates, pod creates, updates, deletes per second. That churn rate is is twenty per second. So yeah, I mean it would be interesting to see with all the phase transitions that we have, <clears throat> what the uh, how would how they get affected based on the churn and. Um, this is something that one of the, my colleagues is, should be talking about for the Kubert Summit. Um, we have a bunch of good pictures that show that actually show this, like how how uh, the churn actually affects um, shows up in the phase transition times, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and there's QPS limit and throughput and yeah, <clears throat> and then nodes versus configs or secrets. So again, I mean, it's like, this is a relationship between configs per node and nodes, but <clears throat> I mean, they're both, they're both certain amounts of pressure, like, and here's how they relate to each other, but it'd be interesting to see like other things, how they relate to nodes. And, you know, it's, a, it's a kind of hard to find like, you know, it seems like they're like we can relate, you know, individual variables, but it'd be interesting to see like some of the others, like how they compare to nodes, like, um, you know, the churn to the number of nodes would be interesting. And, and there's, there's lots of these that we can do. Namespaces, pods for namespace. Yeah, I mean, another really interesting one. That's, this is the one that I was thinking of. So having, if you have a single namespace and, you know, we have a few thousand VMs in it, that can affect our ability to scale. Right, so pods per namespace, 3K, and then that can affect the number of namespaces, the sweet spots, 3K and 50. Or yeah, 3,000 3, and 50 namespaces. So 
something you'll be careful of, or 15 and 10,000. Yeah. So um, I kind of, where I wanted to go with this though, is that um, it would be interesting. I, I like, like I was saying at the, the start, like it would be interesting to define some of these, some of these variables and like, there's a ton of them. And um, that's kind of what I'd like to go with, like eventually, like as the goal for um, when we write this, when we write some sort of test that we can hand off, like, you know, what's the number we want to get back? And kind of the way that I think about it is like, it's like the summary of pressure. Like, so what would make up pressure? Like I, we just went through a bunch of things like, like number of nodes, like we need to know these things, like number of nodes, you know, pods per node, all these things, um, number of objects. Yeah, I, I would, you know, when I start to, to look on that and again, it was like uh, I'm also very interested on this kind of test, and mm -hmm. it's, it's also my roadmap is defining you know more in terms of in the context of cube root, you know VMs per node, VMIs per node, yep, and and not really pods, you know, because Kubernetes is doing for that for pods. I agree. Yeah, I mean, it, well, basically it's one to one, but it, yeah, I mean, it's the we should yeah, I mean, it makes sense we, we use. You know, that's per node. So in our, in our context, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, objects per namespace, um, churn rate. I think verbs like um, I thought that was one of them in here, isn't there? I didn't see this. Verbs, I didn't see that. Pod creates per second. Um, oh, this is the stage, yeah. Yeah, there was I I thought there was one that showed um yeah, here's the controllers may start seeing a performance drop as we increase pods per namespace. I thought there was one that talked about um, the number of verbs um, create, get, list, and whatnot. Yeah, I think one of the pictures was saying about too many get. I don't know where it is now. Oh, the next. Each, oh, here we go. This is it. Okay, so for deletes through the, through the garbage collector, only a throughput of 10 per second can be achieved currently as each delete uses two API calls. So um, yeah, so these are actually API calls, pod creates. This is done by API calls. Mm -hmm. So pod churn is 20 per second. So 20, it's, it's pod churn equals creates four updates, four deletes per second. And, and so this would be any of the verbs that are associated with these. Would be yeah, tamed. they don't, you know, things that they don't define here is how long the pod, you know, the 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 left life the lifetime of the pod, you know, things like that. Um in my case, I'm using like uh you know Q theory to define, you know, using Little's law to define the number of the, the lifetime of the object. Well, when I have it, in, you know, uh, the PR for that for Kubern, I will give more detail on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, what uh, what are some of the other? I mean, like, if we um, as like an exercise, like, what would we? What What are like the? How? What are all the? Can we name all the variables like that we would go? We call like add into pressure like I think I have a bunch of the big ones here nodes vmis per node objects per namespace like number of namespaces so like so like actually it's like a few things it's like the numbers of objects the densities of objects right numbers of APIs uh, API objects so the density of objects so that's how it has they relate to each other. So this is like this would be like here. This would be like density, churn rate. I don't know what this one would be. This is just sort of outside some, pressure. Yeah, just some yeah pressure, something different. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess like our but the other one is also is pressure. So yeah. Yeah, I I don't know how to quant- I don't know how to classify this like as a um I think we can um work maybe like the turn rate for a second. Mm-hmm. I would say you measure limits, you know. Yeah, well, so yeah, right. We want to we want to measure scalability, but oh, yeah, so let me let me do this. So um uh measure what we want to what we want to do is uh We want to quantify pressure. So, um, I mean, it just, it's just a sum of like all these things, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. I mean, PMIs and I don't know, like it's basically every API object. Uh, yeah. I, I would say convert yeah. API you know, objects. So. Otherwise, it's too many things. So, right. Okay. So you want it like this would be, yeah, yeah. I agree. So like it's a measure R footprint, right? Yeah. 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 Makes sense. So every cuber object in the cluster. Okay, that limits the scope. Um. Mm. So then, not objects. So VMIs per node. So VMIs per namespace. Well, it could just be not just VMIs. I mean, it's so VMIs per node. That'd be that'd be one. So this would be yeah. um keyword objects per game space. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, so density. Those are those are two forms of density. It's our namespaces and our nodes. Is there anything else that we can have for density? I mean, I don't. I don't think so. Sorry, for names. Yeah, it's just namespace or backends per service. I think we, we don't vary that. So. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, so I think like, so what I would be interested in is like <clears throat> when we, <clears throat> so as part of this tool, what I, I think we we do like a snapshot, like maybe we do, we could take a snapshot of like this, like what are the number of, like what's what does the cluster look like? The number of API objects, what's the current density and the work rate, call it. I'm going to call this churn. Maybe the churn that we apply. So maybe what we do is we, I think we we get we get values for these, and then we try and solve for one of these. You know, like we do a little bit of algebra. Like we we assume these, and then we try to solve for one of these. So, like for example, on the steady state test, if we take a snapshot of the number of keyword objects in the cluster, the density of those objects. And then if we were to measure the turn rate of them for the number of verbs per second, that would give us an accurate picture of it, of this cluster's scalability. And then with the, so how would that work in reverse? So like, let's do, if we knew the work rate, the current work rate, and we knew the density, um, then we could solve for the number of API objects in the cluster. So that would be like nodes, for example, right? That equation would be like, you know, I'll write it out. So like, like nodes equal, so this would be like scalability limits, so like nodes, number of nodes, number of nodes would be like equal to um, the density plus the, the work rate and then Right, I mean, work rates.
would be the sum of um, number of objects plus density, maybe something like that. I don't know. It's a very loose algebra, but kind of that's what I'm thinking. So we can kind of go that direction. Like if we start, if we design or with these principles in mind, like taking a, a view of the current state of things, and maybe we can, that'll give us a more accurate picture of, you know, what the work rate, the limits, that would be, that's what it would be. So like the work rate limit and the number of nodes we can scale, well, number of nodes. I guess, yeah, we'll call it that, scale. I don't know if I want to use the word scale. Scale, <laughs> we use it in, we're going to use it in maybe, there's lots of different contexts, but I guess that would be the what people would expect, the number of nodes, right? Something like that. I don't know. What do you think? Kind of a long, it seems like we could, I don't know, something we could try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we're just gonna have to do some trial there. But I think that to be like I, the point is like we just want to understand like that this yeah, is well, what goes into scale, yeah. and you know we'll just need to keep that in mind when we when Say, we start measuring. When we have some some of the data, we can think better about this proportion. So yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Cool. All right. Let's go to the last topic. Performance job in performance cluster. So I think this is you, Marcelo. Yeah. Let's take a look. It cool. looks like it's failing, but it's not really failing. You know, um, to clean up after the execution, if you can go, yeah. Okay, this one has failed, but okay. I, I, I fix, <laughs> just go for, um, yeah. Maybe I'll try another one, see if the... Uh... You know, everything is failing. Oh, because you click in the in the others. Oh, do I need to take the top one? Yeah. Okay, let's go to that one. So let's do crucially terminate, but do you have like, does it output something up here maybe? Some it's interesting so. because I just check it and uh, I could see some. Oh, do you know which one, one. Uh, the last one here? The end? Okay. Yeah. Okay, this one's got a little output. Oh, okay. okay, there we go. Yeah, it's. So you can, you can see that you, we have a exit, you know, value as two because the job is being port has failed. In the last line, very less. Oh yeah, okay. So this is regarding the make cluster down for some reason. Oh, or make cluster clean up. I don't remember the command, but anyway. So it's not. It's failing to delete. You know, kubevirt from the cluster, and I need I need to debug that. I don't know what why what's failing. It's not reporting anything, but the experiment is running. And yeah, well, yeah, it's, looks like it. It's really I think, nice. Let's see how many, let's see how we did with some of the. This is 100 <laughs> GMIs again. Okay. And yeah, it might be interesting to compare, you know, this result because this is in the performance cluster. Also, the latency, it's the one that it, it, there was no collocation with the experiment, and this would be an, our baseline. It might, might be interesting to compare this with the other uh, experiment. Uh, the get nodes count is low here. Yeah. Where it's high in the other one. Right? It's not what it was get notes, right? Let's see. Right. There should be a patch note. Notes, right? Yeah, this is. Might be see interesting it. also. Is it too high? No, this is the other one. It's too, I have it right here. Where is it? Uh, I 
it's it's six fifty. The other one, this one's only down to twelve and patch, and this one doesn't have patch um, nodes, but the, the other periodic job does. <clears throat> That's kind of interesting. So maybe we don't have a bug here. And get nodes. Maybe we're just kind of getting extra noise from somewhere. Interesting. Okay. Definitely keep an eye on that. Then now maybe we're maybe we're not measuring the maybe that one isn't isn't the right data. Update. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool, Marcel. Yeah, I just need to check just, you know, um we cluster down and uh, there is another there is another job that it's running there but it's actually failing about the quay yeah if you go the cluster you see cluster scale density you can see the red ones yeah this is <clears throat> this is one of the, the red one i mean here i'll go to do i go to a different one no go to the the, the the name of the the jobs that you can click you can see pre periodic. Oh no! If you come back. Sorry, which oh up here? Yeah. Okay, which the one? red one? So the other. Oh. No, the other. This yes. One. This is actually. It's failing also, but this one it's related to Quay. Um. I, yeah, I need to double check, but. You see the Quay. How many? Um. What's in this test? What are you doing here? So actually, it VMs? it's run it before. It was running, but now it's not running anymore. Um, it's very curious of that. But anyway, is it's actually creating 200, 300, and 400. OK, cool. So it's like a very more and creating more VMs. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, it's awesome to see some progress on that. Okay. Oh, by the way, yes. So the, those jobs. So it's something that we need to discuss. I need. I need the help to think about that. So, you know, those jobs cannot run collocate with other jobs. In, and uh, if we want to, you know, to run it for a PR, for example. We need to make to create some logic that a job identifies that another job is running and wait, you know, something like that. Um, I I was discussing with Daniel Hewler, which is the guy that's responsible for the CI. The point is, we cannot control it via pro because the pro is actually, you know, um, only. Uh, we, we can define uh, one pro job, this uh, maximum concurrence, but if we have many pro jobs, they will, all of them will access the cluster and maybe access the cluster at the same time. So I was thinking, the thing that I was, I was thinking maybe before run the test to see if the test namespace is created, you know, if and wait until it disappear or something like that anyway somebody need to think about that you know i thought we could use the um the serial header like to make sure we're not running in at the same time as anyone else but it, it only works for one one job you know the job will not run so if you have one job with the same name so you know only one kind of job you can control it you know that however if you have like more jobs it's uh you cannot control that okay let me see yeah, yeah. Well, so then, um okay so i mean then we're we could that, that could be the case though then like we basically we're basically going to race right? i mean and also it could happen that someone else could run their test at the same time as us though even if we even after a check right like so there, there almost is no guarantee that I mean, isn't but so this is in the performance cluster though that that we have this problem? Yeah, this is the performance cluster. 
um, because we don't want to make to run tests the same time. And they also interfere, you know, making they interfere in each other. So they run, it's the same cluster. They're not, it's not like the CI that creates a whole new cluster. It, they will create the same thing, delete VMs, you know, jobs can read really doesn't cannot run the same cluster at the same time also impacts the performance. Uh, right now, those jobs that I'm running there is fine because I define different you know, time for the, you know, for, for them. Because I, we have two, as, as you saw, we have, we have two kinds of jobs. One that one runs this, creates 100 VMs, another one that creates more varied range. So one runs like in the morning and the other one at night. But if we want to enable it for a PR, we need to make sure that a job will wait if some something is running. You know. Okay. Yeah, I mean that would be worth having a conversation with Daniel because right, the, otherwise, like we don't really have a way to um, we don't really have a way to get like because this is if we're doing performance testing, we 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 always need exclusive access so yeah i mean for any test it's not even just ours that we're doing here or we wouldn't want any other test to interfere with any other test so maybe exactly. there needs to be a, a way to to do this like yeah know, if no we what. include the new tests it would definitely collide you know it will be hard just to think about time to run them and especially if we want to enable for prs because then we'll be suddenly running so something yeah Okay. Yeah, well, maybe start a, it might be worth a mailing list thread. I, Marcella, maybe this is something that um, maybe get a little more folks in, in on and get some more opinions on. Mm, yeah, I think, yeah, I will create an issue about that. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're pretty much at time. Um, I think uh, so. Something to think about is continuing to think about this. Um, pressure, the sum of pressure, whatever, however we can define this and kind of the work ahead, something to keep in mind. Okay, thanks everyone for your time. See you all later. Thank you, bye-bye.